everybody's talking about this song, everybody's talking about the love story behind it, the meaning of the lyrics and all of that. But the truth is, pop music is changing in 2023. And what no one is really talking about is the production of this song, which is amazing. So today I'll show you how they did it and how you can do it too, making it sound like this. What's up everybody, my name is Bad Habit. Today we're gonna talk about Flowers by Miley Cyrus. A very special song that jumped to number one on Spotify after just a couple of days. And now it's number one on the Billboard Hot 100. It's selling more than any other song in the US and this could very well be the 2023 as it was. And I'm saying that because it's been produced by the same people that have produced Harry Styles' latest album. These two guys, to be honest, are probably my biggest inspiration lately because they've been defining the new sound of pop music for the past past few years. The love story is for sure helping marketing the song, but the success it's having is fully deserved. It's such a great song, it's so catchy, you just hear it once and you'll find yourself singing it in the car, in the shower, walking your dog. I know you're singing it right now. So buckle up because this is gonna be so informative, there's gonna be so much to learn from this song. Now let's jump right into Ableton, let's go. Okay, so the song has no drums up until the chorus and in the verse we only have a couple of things, so I think I'm gonna start from there and very quickly build up to the chorus so then we can start working on the drums. Okay, I got this whirly sound, let me quickly figure out the chords. Okay. Super simple chords. So twice, the same thing. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Cool. The only thing that changes is that before the chorus, we play an E major uh, that becomes dominant 7 to build up the tension for the chorus. So let's record it in. And I also tried to add those little licks and riffs that they play in the original song. I was going through the sounds and I actually found this one that to me sounds closer to the original one. I reduced the reverb and I increased the univibe because I really wanted to have this vibrato effect. Like it's slightly moving. For the bass I'm gonna use Trillion but just as a placeholder for now. Because later I wanna play this real bass live. But Trillion will do just fine to build the whole beat up until the chorus. And then when we also have the drums I can play the real bass. This is very nice. This is the bass line for the verse. It sounds very, very cool. This is basically the verse because the only thing missing actually is Miley Cyrus singing and we cannot have that. Maybe one day, but not today. The only thing that we haven't really done are a bunch of ear candies. What do you mean by ear candies? So ear candies are those little things that you add to your beat to spice it up. Things that might go unnoticed, but it's actually those things that bring your beat to the next level. And trust me, you really don't want to miss it, but we're going to do all that at the end. We're only missing a little bit of chorus effect to make it sound wider and bigger. I don't use this much, but let me try because for this it might actually work. Ooh, yeah, it does work. Okay, first thing we gotta pay attention to, the chorus and the bass line are always changing. Every section is a little bit different and same happens to the drums. First half of the chorus we have a very simple pattern, kick, snare, but then it changes and it goes into this four on the floor with the kick on top of the snare. Okay, I'm looking for some sounds and you know I love addictive drums and for this kind of organic sounding songs it always works. So we're gonna start from this pattern right here, then we're gonna tweak it and fix it a little bit. Come on. Okay, maybe I can work with this. So first of all, I want no effects on this, but this kick has no low end. Let's boost it. Yeah, way better. Cool. I don't want that long tail in the kick, so I want to make it sound really short. Now let's take care of that snare because I hate it. Hey. <laughs> Drum machines, what? Okay, I need to get rid of that long tail, but the sound of this snare is actually really cool. But I want to distort it now. This is tight. Hi-hat now, I need a different one. This could be cool with a little bit of tweaking. The same thing here in the volume envelope, noise, compression, all of this, all of this, enable, enable everything. Oh, listen to this. I need that top end to really come out. In the first half of the chorus, we have the drums that are very choppy, very like gated. So I reduced the velocities to make sure that the feeling was right. 
This is only one thing that we can do to obtain that effect, but I'm gonna show you right now another very cool trick that we can use to improve the overall feeling of the drums. And this is gating the drums with sidechain. Now you are probably thinking, what are you talking about? I'm Italian, that's why I do this. <laughs> we also have our own emoji. Okay, it's actually easier than you would think. We're just gonna use a little sound as a trigger for the sidechain and make sure that the drums are gated when we want to. So I always use this as a trigger, so I'm gonna put in quarter notes for the sidechain compression, you wanna load a compressor, but in this case we're gating the drums, so we're gonna load a gate. Enable the sidechain and make sure that we select sidechain as the trigger track that we just created, so this one right here. So see, what's gonna happen now is that the drums are only playing when the sidechain is happening, but when the trigger goes away, so basically from here to here, the drums are not playing, they're gated completely, okay? So now we can just tweak this to our liking to a longer release because I don't want the gate to cut the hi-hat completely. And also the gain reduction has to be less, way less, so like minus. 14, something like that. Without it, listen, you can still kind of hear that hi-hat on the upbeat. It's so subtle, but very useful, especially in this part because the drums are very tight, very choppy, like we said. Okay, I think this is pretty good for now. I told you, that was easy. The snare that we have right now, I like it, but I think a good layer between two different sounds could be exactly what we're missing. Okay, this one. Together with the other drums. Ooh, this is too much, but I like this. Ooh, some compression, some more drive. I love this. We have this extra layer complementing the drums that we had already that were sounding okay, but this snare, wow. We can group these drums so that we have our gated drums all in one group. Okay, we've all been there. We have our drums now and they're sounding cool, but they're not quite hitting like we want to. So what can we do now? This is when I start using loops. I try to avoid loops in the very beginning. I always try to build my own drums first so that if I need some extra help, like in this case, now I can start looking for some loops to support my drums and make them better. So for instance, I just found this one and this could work. We don't need this. We place the snare and put it right here. Now I still need to find a good balance between the tracks, but already if I mute it, listen, without it and with it. It's such a good blend and also this is a live loop. So we're also adding some human feeling and that's always something that you want to have. LFO tool to make sure that we reduce a little bit the volume of that upbeat hi-hat. So much better. That's why it's so important to layer things. Use loops, that's fine, but also try to implement your own drums, your own sounds, and then when you blend them together, you're gonna get a way better effect. One very important thing that we haven't done yet, every time the snare hits, I hear something flaming. There's also some claps. I found all of these claps that sound a little bit different from each other. So if you're clapping, it's never gonna sound the same twice, right? I wanna keep that live feeling. I think I'm gonna keep all of these claps, and each time I'm gonna use a different one. This one, this one. A little bit ahead, a little bit behind. They don't have to be perfect. I want to hear the flams. Every time it hits, it's a little bit different. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing with these ones. No sustain, a lot of attack, and some old good saturation. Can you hear the flaming between clap and snare? Okay, moving on, moving on. I need to put back the electric piano and the bass line. Okay, let me hear it with the other bass, if it sounds better or worse. Ooh, you know, I like this one better actually because it's a little bit more muted. Now it's starting to make sense. Now I got all the chords here for the post and then for the hook. They change a little bit, they're always kind of similar, but then here, this happens. Preparing you for the hook that's coming now. I want to add a little bit of compression to these drums here. But there's one thing that I forgot to do. The kick becomes four on the floor here from the post chorus and then also in the hook. I want to do this. Exactly. So now the kick is hitting also on top of the snare and this brings the energy up. Now I got to do the same thing with this loop. So I got to take the kick from here or here and make them four on the floor. This way we have the same feeling also with the loop because we don't wanna have our drums four on the floor and then the loop without the kick four on the floor. That's just gonna sound weird when we play them together. Yeah, drums go away here. 
perfect blend between bass line and drums and then here four on the floor ah very cool very cool gotta mute the first hit because when the chorus drops there's no kick it actually drops on the two one and one thing that I love is that there's no cymbals at all. Every time the chorus drops, no cymbals, and that's amazing. Okay guys, now it's time for one of my favorite things of the whole song, which is strings. That string part gives me that 70s feeling right away. I'm gonna use Contact Session Strings Pro. They sound very good and very realistic. We just had a new subscriber live. I don't know if you could hear it, but thank you, whoever you are. Yeah, okay, okay. So this is another old school element that appears in this song and we're seeing the same thing that we saw when we remade Kill Bill by SZA. That song was also classic, the songwriting and the chords, the melody too. Both songs sound like records from 50 years ago, but at the same time they sound so fresh and unique, they sound so different just by sounding older. Pop music is changing, I'm telling you. Okay, I also want to add a second layer of violins on top. Oh yeah, that's gonna help a lot. This gives a whole new vibe to the song when you get to this post-chorus. You're not expecting the strings to kick in like that. This is sounding insane. I can love me better, baby. Can love me better. And to make them sound like they're really coming from the 70s, what we can do is actually add a pre. We're trying to recreate the effect that we would have going into a Neve. And the little trick that I have here is actually using this in mic mode. This is gonna boost the volume like crazy, but then I'm gonna use the pad minus 20 this way we can keep the saturation coming from the pre but without having that crazy output volume and we can probably push this to 35 and here in this final part before the hook we have some sort of like vibrato effect so to achieve that we can try to put a tremulator and maybe automate this so that it only happens in that part vibrates a little bit and then goes away and goes into the hook amazing i also can hear some cellos playing and maybe even some basses just here on this one same thing with the basses okay very nice perfect i love this so that together build tension Okay, now a very, very good tip for strings. If you really wanna hear the hair moving on the strings, a very nice plugin that you can use for this is the OTT. This is gonna help you tremendously bringing out those frequencies and making it sound like it's being played in this room right here. Focus on the frequencies, not on the volume chain. So simple, but it really brings out the character of the strings of the orchestra. Time for adding the reverb. This is exceptional. It's the EMT 140, one of the most famous reverbs and uh, uh, orchestra plate. Oh yeah. Just listen to the tail of the room, it, it's incredible. Now, we are at a point where it's starting to sound like a song that could be on the radio, but if we want to take it one step further and make it sound even more pro, we can record the bass live and add some guitars. The same part that we recorded with Trillion, I'm gonna play it with the real bass, and I'm gonna do it with the pick, and I'm gonna try to keep it a little bit muted. It's not something like that. This is too much, but it's not even like that. It's something in between, like a... For the chorus, the bass line changes a little bit. It's very tight, especially the first note. Very muted, like... Oh yeah, oh yeah. And then in the post-chorus, it changes again. So I cannot just copy-paste this, I gotta play it. Ah, oh, come on, that was easy. Nah, 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 nah. Terrible. And guess what? In the hook, it changes again. Okay, I wasn't really happy with all the takes that I played before, so I had to play more. And <laughs> I got to take 39, I think. This is the last one that I played, I don't remember. And I just finished comping this. So what this means is that I took all the takes that I played and I took the best parts from each take. Like this one is coming from seven and this one comes from 15. Sometimes I move some notes, maybe ahead or maybe a little bit behind. But in general, I also like a little bit of that laid back feeling. Nobody's perfect when we play and uh, I like it that way. Yeah! 
It sounds like I'm actually a good bass player, but I'm not. So guys, as you can see, I'm not the best bass player, but as long as I play with the right feeling, I can make it work. I know what you're thinking now. Oh, I don't even play the bass. How am I supposed to do this and that? No, hey, stop. Remember that we had Trillion loaded up up until now, and it was sounding incredible. We are in 2023. If you don't play bass, you can still do a great job with plugins because they sound amazing. Do you know Attention by Charlie Puth? That's a fake bass. That's actually a patch coming from Trillion, and that song has one billion streams. So I think you can do it too. One thing that I wanted to show you guys, don't be afraid even when you play something like this bass part that I just did now, just cut it, just fade it out if it's needed. Like in this example, hear this hear how short it is now. This is how I originally played it. And this is different, right? But I just faded it out and now I got the effect that I wanted. So don't be intimidated by the fact that maybe you can play the bass a little bit, but you're not good enough to do this or that. You can always find workarounds like I do. Ooh. Here, without it. Absolutely great. Heavy distortion, but then I dial it back. I found this mid-range guitar boost and it gives me those mids that I was missing. Oh, I love that lick. Let's go with the guitars now. If you can guess the song, you win a free plugin. Now we want to double it so we have a left and right. The guitar is also supporting the bass in some of the licks, like this one. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Computer is gone. I need the Mac Studio. So I noticed just now that there is also a pad in the verse. I just found this pad here on Omnisphere. Basic imaging to make it wider. And a couple more things that I added to the drums. I wanted to have a little layer on top of every kick and every snare. So I just went for these shakers. Helps a lot the kick and the snare. Then here in the post chorus, like a little cabasa coming in. And then this shaker loop that I chopped, but super quiet. Minus 24, all of these little things help with the groove. So let's process these drums as usual. Compression, probably some saturation. Let's go. This is hitting so hard, so let me reduce a little bit. Now I'm missing a little bit of low end. This should do the job pretty well. I was really missing that low end in the kick. I don't think I've ever used this one, but let's try it. Okay, does its job. So without all of this processing... Oh no, I can't believe this. Listen, like, no processing, they're all over the place. And now... I would just add a little reverb just to give that feeling of drums played in a live room. Very little room. As promised, it's time for some ear candies. I'm gonna show you a couple of things that they did to embellish the song, to bring it to the next level. And these are things that you can do too, or just take some inspiration from it for your own beats. We have some drums in the verse too, but they're so filtered. And then there's also some glass percussion or something like that. Okay, so each one of these has to be tuned differently. Perfect. Same with this one. Yeah, okay. Together with a little bit of reverb, they sound like this. And I chopped another loop to obtain this. So like a very filtered drum sound, just to give some movement while we're building up to the chorus. Very quick, there's also some sort of reverse strings in the verse, and we can do that very easily. We have this, but to do a reverse effect, I'm gonna use a filter. This one has a very cool feature. It has an input gain. So I'm gonna create a reverse effect just by boosting the input. And now just with these two automations, we have this. Ah, super cool. There is another sound in the chorus that kind of supports the vocals, some of the licks of the bass and the guitars. It sounds to me like it's some sort of like organ or something, but like very distorted. We gotta distort it even more. Drive it five, punish on. Oh yeah. Next, that reverse vibrato thing that we have right before the chorus. I just started from this patch, which was already distorted and has the control for the tremolo, 100% depth. And now we have this. 
which is already kind of close, but we can do better now with the camel crasher on. Way better, way better. And now I'm gonna bounce it to audio, but this is too loose. We need the vibrato to be very short. We need it to be like, I'm just gonna chop. I'm gonna start fixing it with the fades. And now it sounds like this. More distortion coming from decapitator and automation on the volume, we obtain this. Ah, yes. All right, guys, we made it once again, and I think it came out insanely good this time. And if you are following along, great job because you made it to the end. Doing all this is so much fun and it just makes you more valuable. Studying these songs and understanding why they're working will make you a way better producer. And also, it's just great practice. So now you're on your way to make your beats sound even better, even more special. Thank you so much for watching, for staying till the end. I hope it was worth it and that you got something out of it. For any questions, any doubts, don't hesitate, leave a comment below. I'm gonna reply to every single one of you so hit the like button if you like the video subscribe to the channel if you aren't already and i'll see you in the next one